Alright, people are confused. So let's go through a very simple installation of the Forge source for 1.7 and the new Gradle stuff. I'm going to grab a random source, download it, take all of the files, and put it into some random folder. Now, you shift right click, open command window here, and you type Gradle W setup dev workspace, and I'm going to be using Eclipse, so I type Eclipse. If you're using IDEA, you type in IDEA. Uh, Gradle comes with a lot of plugins for a lot of different uh, IDEs, so if you don't know which one is yours, just do a quick Google search, see if Gradle supports it. By default, we support and ship run configurations and everything for Eclipse, as that's our officially supported uh, IDE for Forge. So we run this. It'll take a little bit. It has to download pretty much everything for you. The Forge user dev library, which includes all of our sources and patch patches and all that good stuff. The assets uh, come from either your user, your Minecraft install directory, or it's downloaded. Downloads a client, server, merges them, applies bin patches, blah blah blah. It's defuscating the jar, setting up the Eclipse workspace, downloading, well, additional stuff. It'll download everything that needs to be done. And then it's done. So you go to Eclipse. You go to this Eclipse folder. Copy it. Set it as your workspace. And paste. Give it a second to refresh. And you'll notice that it has source main Java, source resources Java. And this is where you put your code. As an example mod already with it. And it has MC mod info for that mod. Pretty ex simple stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into the modding tutorial specifics, but here it is. Now, to debug, it come, if you use Eclipse in our workspace, it comes with two default configurations client and server. If we go into here, you can see that it runs Project Minecraft, Launch Wrapper, and then these are important program arguments that tell it to use Forge by using the FML tweaker and then ignoring any invalid certificates. If you are running with a custom IDE, you'll have to set up all of this information yourself. But it's fairly straightforward. There's this code is copied on our wiki and like fifty thousand other places. So yeah, let's let's run the client. Give it a second to load up. And you'll notice it says one seven two uh forge ten point twelve point zero nine eight seven. See? And if you go to the mods list, example mod, hey, it's working. Now let's exit out of here. And I exit out of Eclipse. <coughs> this is where people get confused. How do you update Minecraft Forge setup environment? Oh, look. Let's go to build.gradle. And you see here, there's a bunch of stuff. You should prob this is the information that you should care about for your mod specifically. Archive base name is the name of your mod. Group is your 
artifact group, for example, forges is net.minecraftforge. And the base name would be forge. Version would be 10 point whatever. So this is what you care about when updating forge. If you go to our website, it has all of our versions listed right here and the Minecraft version. The full forge version number is Minecraft version hyphen our version. And that's what you put here. So I'm working with 987 right now. I want to update to 995. I go here, I change the number to 995. I save the file, go back to here, and run the exact same command. Hit enter, and I wait. Da 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 da. Downloads all the stuff. It skips a lot of stuff because it already did it. All the assets are already downloaded. All of that good stuff is done. Downloads the new 995 user dev. Oh look, it's done. Now go back to Eclipse. Same workspace. Hit OK. Alright, everything looks the same. Now let's go back to debug. Start client. You're now running Forge 995. Seriously, it's that freaking simple to update. People make things complicated. They tell you to install five different mods and programs and all that stuff and link folders and all that stuff. No. To update, you edit this line in your build.gradle. That's it. Now to release, here let's give this a uh, test mod version. Ideally, just for the sanity of the Minecraft community, you want to put the version of Minecraft that you're targeting in your version number. So 1.7.2, our version number 1.0. And your group name is, well, it'd be for me. I own the MinecraftForge.net domain. So you put it in reverse. And then Lex is just for my personal projects. Close that, go over here, and go to Gradle W Build. If I remember correctly, that is the command that will do all the fancy stuff, compile your Java. Hey, look, build successful. Go here, go to the build folder, go to libs, and you now have your test mod version 17210 see the reason I say that putting Minecraft in the version is important is because you instantly see from the file name that this is for Minecraft 1.7.2 people it's that simple make it easy on the users and it, you have our example mod in here and it should be good to go. Um, yeah, that's as simple as it. Quit making it complicated. We we work hard on making this stuff very simple for you. Yeah. Um, when checking things into a clip or into a GitHub, you'll notice that. Uh, let me grab it. All of this stuff here. The only things that really need to go into an Eclipse workspace is Gradle.w, or Gradle.w, your build.gradle, source folder, and the Gradle folder. The licensing information is stuff specific for Forge, the change log is for Forge, the Eclipse folder, that becomes an issue after you actually use it because Eclipse likes to throw a lot of metadata around. There's really no clean way to have the Eclipse folder usable in a repository. But these 
five things are what you want to put in your repository. That way, you don't have to install Gradle, you don't have to do any of that fancy stuff. It is just there, and it works. All right. I'm sick if you can't tell, but this stuff is getting really, really annoying, and you guys should know better.